joined this morning by Congressman Lloyd Smucker of the 11th Congressional District. Obviously, a lot has happened uh, since last Wednesday, and he was uh, kind of right in the center of the storm there in Washington, D.C., when the Capitol was was stormed. And uh, he joins us this morning here on WSBA. Congressman, good to have you aboard this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Sure. Thanks for having me, Gary. Well, you know, let me let me go back a week, obviously, from today. And uh, obviously, you know, we had the, the rally that was in Washington, D.C., and then part of that turned into, you know, storming the Capitol for all intents and purposes by, by a number of people, uh, lawlessness. Uh, you were there speaking, of course, on that day also about the Electoral College vote, uh, as you have a right to do, and I have a right to have an opinion on that. Uh, and... Uh, a lot has been done since then. A lot has been said since then. But but if you can, take us back for a week and, and give us a thought what it was like to be on the other side of those doors and the other side of those walls as people were coming to the Capitol and in, in, in a number of cases, you know, trying to destroy it. And uh, a person was killed as a result of that. Uh, that was a protester. A, 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 a Capitol policeman was killed. Uh, another one I saw later on committed suicide. Three other people died outside. I mean, it's just an absolutely catastrophic day. Your thoughts about all of that uh, from your personal perspective inside and also what you saw in the panoramic view later on outside. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very sad day for uh, America. Uh, certainly as we see additional images and video of the event, uh, it's just sickening. Uh, to see that uh, a mob attacked and killed a uniformed member of law enforcement. Uh, they, uh, you know, as you said, people were hurt, people died as a result of this. Um, uh, it was absolutely horrific and, and not who we uh, are as a country. In fact, it's not who we uh, are as Republicans, and it's not who Trump supporters are. Uh, in the district that I represent and across the country. So it was... Uh, it was it was horrific. Uh, I was not on the floor at the time this occurred. Restriction mm-hmm. uh, in regards to the number of people are limited on the floor due to COVID. So many of us were watching from our offices, my uh, office building, uh, and I was there by the way with a few members of my staff. That was um, uh, limited as well in, in the number of people who were there. But we we were evacuated uh, when the Capitol was breached and moved to another building, but. Uh, came back uh, to our office building sh- uh, shortly, uh, maybe an hour afterwards, and so but was not directly um, uh, observant of, of what was happening. We could hear noises, and uh, there was a lot of fear, uh, particularly among staff and others who were being moved around. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a sad day, um, and it's, it's one that we just simply cannot uh, accept. And as we... Uh, talk here today, there are still, there are additional credible uh, threats uh, to the Capitol. Uh, it's unbelievable to see yeah. uh, thousands of National Guard around the U.S. Capitol. It's unbelievable to see perimeter fences with uh, barbed wire uh, around the Capitol. And so we must unequivocally fully reject any additional violence. And I think the, the president needs to continue to make clear that that uh, he uh, absolutely rejects that uh, and will work towards a peaceful, a peaceful transition. Um, this is uh, this is this is terrible for the country, um, and it's not who we are. There has been obviously a barrage of things that have happened since then. Uh, we've had people uh, saying that anyone who was associated with that. Uh, demonstration that day uh, starting with the the attendance at the trump rally is somehow responsible for this or somehow tarred and feathered with this uh that congressmen um like yourself for example have right. been asked to step down and resign uh, as congressman perry was as right. you were and, and a number of editorials i know it's all the lancaster online version of their newspaper uh saying we could no longer represent this because you disagreed with the electoral vote here in Pennsylvania, uh, the the numbers and you know I, I I I read that as a citizen. I thought, wait a second, when did voicing an opposite opinion in a lawful way in the well of the House or on the floor of the Congress somehow become a bad thing? And, and again, how did that in any way incite 
any of this kind of violence. People have to take responsibility for themselves. And there were a lot of people last week who took responsibility for themselves in terms of attending a peaceable assembly who didn't take part in the violent kind of protests that we saw at the Capitol. So this idea that we all of a sudden tar and feather everybody because of the actions of some, uh, to me, is totally against American ethics and American standards and American principles. And the fact that our representatives represented a constituency that had questions about the election, even though people say, well, it was decided in the courts and so forth, but still there were questions there. To me, that's what we're all about. Your thoughts on all that? Well, um, listen, the, 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 the president should have ramped down the rhetoric. There's no question about that in my mind. Um, there were many people who went to that rally who believed that the results of the election could still be changed, which was mm-hmm. not true. And to continue to push the idea that Congress would in some way have changed the uh, outcome by rejecting electors was just impossible because you know, you would have to have a majority vote in both houses for that to uh, occur. Right. Um, and I, I knew no Democrat would vote for it. And there was a serious constitutional question for some Republicans that led some Republicans to accept the electors. And so, you know, c- continuing to uh, push the idea that the uh, election could have been changed gave false hope to people and was a mistake. Right. Uh, but I fully agree with you that uh, most people who went to that rally had no intentions and would not have dreamed that it would have been uh, hijacked uh, in the way it was by a small group of individuals whose intent was to do, you know, was to assault uh, American democracy. Um, and and so we we're uh, you know we cannot paint everyone with a broad brush and that Correct. unfortunately is is what happening today now i voted against the electors in the state of pennsylvania because um, you know once we're through all this there will still remain a serious constitutional question about how the election was conducted uh, in pennsylvania i made it clear uh, on the floor that night that um that my vote was not about fraud um i uh, had earlier, right after the election, I had uh, encouraged everyone to remain patient while we, uh, while Trump's team worked in the court of courts of law right. to uh, investigate allegations of evidence. They were unsuccessful in proving or showing that there was uh, a, a, a widespread fraud uh, mm-hmm. in a court of law, uh, which was the avenue to address that. But then after that, what's still remaining is the fact that there were unlawful, what I believe were unlawful changes to the election law leading up to the election, changes made by the Secretary of State, changes made by right. the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, by the governor. Uh, and that is unconstitutional uh, by state constitution and by, by uh, federal constitution. So the fact of the matter is that is a question that still remains it's why i voted against elector i i had no illusions about the election outcome being changed right um, i can count i can count <laughs> but uh, i felt like we can't allow a precedent like that to just remain in place like what changes could be made down the road so uh, in essence what you were doing was was people. was standing up for some of your constituents, and raising the questions in the public forum, and no better public forum to be raised than at that time in front of the House, where you're a member, to say, okay, here are the questions that I have, even though I'm not under any illusions that the vo- vote's going to be somehow overthrown. Can you stick with us for one more segment here, Congressman? We're with uh, Congressman Lloyd Smucker of the 11th Congressional District. Congressman, uh, obviously a lot has happened since last week. Um, today we have impeachment uh, going up for a vote uh, in the House, uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, um, very adamant about doing this now. She was calling for the 25th Amendment to be invoked. Doesn't look like Vice President Pence is going to do that. Uh, your thoughts about the whole impeachment process, the second time uh, that you've had to go through this as a congressman and that we've had to go through this as a nation, uh, what are your thoughts? Is this an appropriate thing to be doing right now or not? Well, listen, after the violence on Wednesday, we came together as members of Congress 
and we held the votes uh, to uh, to certify the uh, election. Uh, so in the end, democracy won out, as it will uh, after we're through this week. There will be a peaceful transition uh, of power of one president to another, uh, as has occurred since uh, Abraham or Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, uh, uh, turned the uh, uh, presidency over to John Adams. Uh, and it's important that uh, continue. You know, Americans are angry, frustrated hurt. The last thing we should be doing uh, in Congress uh, is continue to ramp up that. We should begin with a process to heal the country. Uh, and the vote we had last night asking uh, the vice president to invoke the 25th Amendment after he had already said he would not do so. He, he's the only one who can lead that charge uh, after it said was just simply um, spurring on additional division uh, in, in in the country. And the impeachment vote is the same thing. Uh, right. There is um, no way that I can see where impeachment would move the president, uh, would remove the president. Um, and the president has already agreed to a peaceful transition. So, you know, this is just simply going to uh, build on the division that already exists and just exacerbate that. And so, no, I think it's I think it is absolutely the wrong move. I think it's honestly a missed opportunity for uh, President-elect uh, Biden, who could have asked Democrats in Congress mm -hmm. to call off this move uh, and could have reached out to the country, including uh, Trump supporters and said that we all need to begin to heal, need to begin to uh, rebuild and work together for the American people. So I think it's a it's a missed opportunity for the incoming president as well. Let me let me talk about that a little bit uh, for the president and the Congress as our representatives of the people. What is it going to take for states people to step up in this moment? It, it seems like we have gone to our worst angels here in the last week with a lot of what we've done, the blaming, the censoring, the uh, canceling uh, of things, uh, the, the jumping on Twitter, uh, uh, you know, knocking out the, the president, uh, at least while he's in office, off Twitter, and then possibly Facebook for life, all those kind of things. What's it going to take for uh, yeah. a wake-up call in Washington, D.C., for our new president coming in who says he wants to unite, and for people in our Congress uh, are, are states people ready to step out and have their voices heard louder over the din of the people who uh, seem to be wanting to divide us right now? About a minute, 15 seconds. Final thoughts on your part. Yeah, we, we must find uh, ways to come together, and I hope my Democrat colleagues um, uh, understand that and uh, begin to try to rebuild uh, the country. But at the end of the day, when we're through all of this, there will still be as existed before, very different visions about the direction to take the country. Sure. We're going to have vigorous debates about that. You know, I'm going to continue to advocate for Republican principles like limited government, fiscal stewardship, renewing the American dream for all. So we will have those vigorous debates. But, you know, we've we've lost the idea in the country and even in Congress of, of, of civility, of, of debate um, with, without um, – you know, without hating one another, frankly. Yeah. Um, and we have to find a way to have a debate in the public square that is open to all, respectful. Uh, we have to relearn what it means to be um, uh, peaceful and compassionate, especially when, when, when we disagree. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm going to be anxious to whoever develops that elixir because they could uh, sell it in droves. I mean, just like we're administering the COVID vaccine in the country, maybe we need to administer a vaccine for being decent to one another again. I think that's going to be a key as the Congress moves forward and as the country moves forward. Congressman Spocker, we appreciate you taking the extra time this morning. I know it's a difficult time, but we appreciate uh, your thoughtfulness today, and we look forward to talking to you again next month. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary.